Hello and welcome to Ms. Ma's grade 11 functions class. This is 4.2 and 4.3, integer and rational exponents. Okay, so let's start with some exponent rules. Um, the product rule, you probably remember, is a to the m times a to the n is equal to a to the m plus n. The quotient rule, a to the m over a to the n is equal to a to the m minus n. And the power rule, a to the m to the n is equal to a to the m n. So these are actually constructed as follows. If you look at these fives, we can start filling them in. So five to the one, that's equal to five. And five squared is 25, which is, as we all know, five times five. Five cubed, 125. Five to the four, 625, and 5 to the 5 is 3125. Well, if you don't have your calculator handy and you wanted to figure out what 5 to the 5 was, the easiest way is to kind of go upwards, right, and say, okay, as I go upwards, I'm going to multiply by 5. So I start with 5 to the 1 and multiply by 5 times 5 times 5 times 5. And that makes sense because 5 cubed is equal to 5 times 5 times 5. And 5 to the 4 is 5 times 5 times 5 times 5, 4 times. And 5 to the 5, 5 times 5 times 5 times 5, which is 5 to the 4, times another 5. So the exponents work like this. If we have a 5, then we're going to be multiplying the base, 5, times itself five times. And if I wanted to do five to the n, I would do five times itself n times, however many n was. And we always move up by multiplying by five. If we were moving downwards, we wanted to go from five to the five, we knew what five to the five was, but we didn't know what five to the four was, we would actually be dividing by five. So here we're going from here to here, we divide by five, from five to the four to five to the three, we divide by five, from five to the three to five to the two, dividing by five, and from five to the two to five to the one, we're dividing by five. So the question is, how do I get to five to the zero? What does five to the zero mean? and most people have already memorized that 5 to the 0 is 1 and that's because as we move downwards as we start from 5 we're going to go 5 to the 1 divided by 5 well 5 divided by 5 that's 1 so that's where we get 5 to the 0 so that's the construction of the 0 exponent and as we continue to go downwards so you can see this is going 5 4 3 2 1 0 the next one must be negative 1 and we're going to construct that in exactly the same way. I'm going to go from 1 down to 5 to the negative 1 by dividing by 5. And that gives me 1 over 5. 5 to the negative 2, I'm going to do it in exactly the same way, divide by 5. 1 over 5 divided by 5, which gives me 1 over 25, if you use your calculator. Or in other words, it's 1 over 5 times 5, which is 1 over 5 squared. And as I keep going downwards, we'll notice that I keep dividing by 5, and the exponent in the bottom gets bigger and bigger, and it is exactly the same as the number part of the original. So one, 5 to the negative 3 is 1 over 5 to the 3. And the negative exponent rule then is if I have a to the negative n, that's going to be equal to 1 over a to the n. And Additionally, if you see this is actually the reciprocal, then we can say, okay, if I've got, let's say I've got a over b to the negative n, so now I've got a fraction to the negative n, I'm actually going to say, okay, that's the reciprocal, which is b over a to the n. Or in other words, b to the n over a to the n. And that's an exponent rule that you need to memorize. And if you haven't memorized that, you should memorize it as soon as possible. Okay, so we're going to use those rules to find the answers for these. 4 to the negative 2, so that's going to be 4 to the negative 2 is 1 over 4, that's the reciprocal, squared. So this is 1 over 16. If it says simplify, we only basically want to get rid of the negative exponent, but if it says evaluate, then we'll find the number. So if you just see simplify, you actually don't need to find 1 over 16, you'd only have to find 1 over 4 squared. 
For B, this is just actually a reminder that when you're doing this kind of question, you need to keep the brackets. So if I'm doing negative 4 to the negative 2, it's 1 over negative 4 squared. Negative 4 squared is not the same thing as negative 4 squared, like this. Negative 4 squared is negative 4 times negative 4, which gives us 16. But negative 4 squared, like this, without the brackets, is going to be, you keep the negative, and then you do 4 squared, which is 16. So this is 1 over 16, but this one, which keeps the negative on the outside, is negative 1 over 4 squared, which is 1 over, negative 1 over 16. And the last one is just going to be using the a over b instead. So we're going to keep that negative and do 5 over 4. You could just do the flip first, over negative 4, sorry, to the 2. So we got rid of the negative by flipping it. Be careful that you don't take that negative and put it down into the base. That's not where it goes. So a lot of people would have done this. They would have put 5 over positive 4 squared? No, that's no good, okay? Don't do that. You've got to keep the negatives in the base the way they are, and you just flip them to get rid of the negative in the exponent. And this is equal to 5 squared over 4 squared, negative 4 squared, which is 25 over 16. If you like to think of it in a different way, you can think of it as the negative, if it has a negative exponent, it's unhappy, and it wants to move. So these both have a negative exponent, they want to move. So it's in the top, and it's unhappy, so it moves to the bottom to be happy. And 5 was negative, and then it became happy by moving to the top, because it was in the bottom. All right, and let's do E, last one. Do it in a different color. So first we're going to use the power rule to get rid of this negative 1, and just multiply it in first. So 3 to the sorry, 3x to the 4 to the negative 2m times negative 1 is positive 2m, 3 to the negative 2 over x to the 6m, I'm just going to make myself some space right here, okay, now we're going to again use the power rule, 3 to the 2m, x to the 8m times 3 to the negative 6, 12m over x to the 6m, and then we'll use our power rule. So 3 to the 2m plus 3 to the negative 12m is 3 to the negative 10m, and we'll use the quotient rule. x to the 8m divided by x to the 6m is x to the 2m, and you can see that x is happy where it is. It's a positive exponent, so it's going to stay in the top, but 3 has a negative exponent, so it's unhappy. It's going to move down to the bottom, and then it's happy. It's got a positive exponent. Okay, we also need to worry about rational exp exponents, and in case you don't know what rational means, rational comes from the word ratio. A ratio is something like 1 to 2, which is another way of saying 1 half, right? We can express it in the same way. So a rational number is something that is a fraction. So we're talking about fractional exponents here. And I want to show you how we construct those. So this question is going to help us do it. Express the side length of a square as a power of area. So we all know that the formula is a equals x squared. Let's say x is the length of the side. So what we want to do is we want to express x as a power of area. So area will have a power like this. And we want to figure out what the n is. What is this n? So we've defined this variable and this exponent, but we do know that a is equal to x times x, right? That's from the formula. And if we substitute this in, then we see a is equal to a to the n times a to the n. Or in other words, a to the 1 is equal to a to the 2n. So if I have the same base, I'm allowed to take the exponents and just make them equal to each other, so we know that 1 is equal to 2n. And if we isolate, then we know that n is equal to 1 half. If we had isolated x in the beginning, we would see that um, x is equal to root a, right? But we just found out that n is 1 half, so x is also equal to a to the half. 
So that means that if we're talking about root a, like this, um, this is equal to a to the half. So that's how the rational exponents work. If we have it 1 over some number, it's going to be that root. I'll show you another one. Express the side length of a cube as a power volume. So in this case, v equals x cubed. And again, we want to express x as a power of v, so let's use m this time. So going from here again, and we're going to substitute it in, v is equal to x times x times x, and substitute v to the m for x, v is equal to v to the m times v to the m times v to the m. So v to the 1 is equal to v to the 3m, and therefore 1 is equal to 3m, and m is equal to 1 third. So if I had isolated this originally, I would see that v or sorry, x is equal to the cube root of v, and that's the same thing as saying v to the one-third. So the cube root of v is equal to v to the one-third. So basically, the rule is if you have the nth root of a, then this is equal to a to the one over n. So let's write that into our rules here. a to the 1 over n is equal to the nth root of a. From here we can also see that if I have something like this, the nth root of a to the m instead, so now I've got a power inside, this is going to be equal to, well, the nth root of a to the m is a to the m to the 1 over n, right? And if I use the power rule, I can see that this is equal to a to the m over n. So that's another rule that we can write into there. The a to the m over n is equal to the cube root of, sorry, the nth root of a to the m. So these are the new rules that you need to memorize, these blue rules. So we're going to try them out. Okay, 49 to the negative 1 half. This is a combo. So we're going to get rid of the negative first. So it goes 1 over 49 to the half. And 49 to the half, that's the square root of 49, so 1 over 7. 289 to the 0 0.5. You could rewrite that as 1 over 2, oh, 1 over, silly. 289 to the half. Too eager with the negatives. There's no negative here, so I'm not going to flip it, but I am going to make this into a fraction. And so that's the square root of 289, so that's 17. Here I've got the negative again, so I'm going to make that negative flip this over, but it doesn't change the negative in front, so this is going to be negative 1331 over 125. And I'm going to separate it out. I want to do the third first, and then I'm going to do the squared, because that's usually easier. We get to smaller numbers. Instead of make our numbers bigger, we want to make them smaller. The cube root of 1331 is negative 11 here, and the cube root of 125 is 5. So we'll square that, and then we are going to go 121 over 25. And this last one, we're going to make this all into fractions, use our quotient and product rule, and then we will simplify it, if possible, and evaluate it. So this is really 8 to the 5 over 6. The square root of 8 is 8 to the half. And on the bottom we've got 8 to the 5 over 3. So if I write this all in one line with one base, 8 to the 5 over 6 plus 1 half minus 5 over 3. And if you don't remember how to do fractions, if you don't remember how to add these, you're going to have to review that on your own. 8 to the 5 over 6 plus 3 over 6 minus 10 over 6. That gives me 8 minus 10, negative 2. So this is 8 to the negative 1 third. I'll get rid of the negative by putting it in the bottom. And then the cube root of 8, that's 2. So that's how you do it. Okay, 
So once again, we've got our different rules for exponents, the product rule, the quotient rule, the power rule, and now we have the negative exponent rule and the rational exponent rule. Thanks for watching.